Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Matt Pearson, and I teach in the linguistics department here at Reed. Um, so I'll start by telling you a little bit about myself, uh, and then I'll tell you a little bit about our department. Um, so I'm actually a Reed graduate myself. I graduated from Reed back in 92. I then went on to UCLA, which is where I did my graduate work. Uh, and then I got hired uh, first as a visitor and uh, now a, as a permanent person about 20 years ago uh, uh, as faculty at Reed. My particular focus is on uh, syntax. So I study uh, sentence structure. Uh, and try and understand by looking at the grammars of different languages, try to understand something about how our, uh, uh, the, the kinds of principles that we have inside our brains that allow us to uh, put words together to form sentences and to take the sentences that we hear other people speak and uh, sort of analyze their internal structure. So that's sort of the main focus that I have. So I, I teach uh, courses at Reed that deal with syntax, both at the introductory and at the advanced level. I'm also uh, one of the co-teachers uh, of our introduction, our introductory course, which is called Introduction to Linguistic Analysis. Uh, and I teach a few other courses as well that I'll tell you a little bit more about later. Uh, so I work primarily on Malagasy, uh, which is the language of Madagascar. Uh, and I do my work, I've been to Madagascar and done field work there, uh, although most of the work that I do on Malagasy involves working with um, uh, native speakers of Malagasy who live in uh, Montreal and the area around Montreal and Quebec. Uh, there happens to be a large community of Malagasy immigrants who live in Quebec. Uh, and I'm interested in how word order works in Malagasy. I'm interested in how verbs are put together. I'm interested in how uh, uh, things like time are expressed in Malagasy, and I'm happy to go into detail about any of those things if you're, if you're interested. Alongside me, there's uh, Kara Becker, uh, who's uh, been at Reed since 2010, um, and Kara teaches courses on what is called sociolinguistics. So basically, those aspects of the field of linguistics that deal with issues of language and culture, or how language interfaces with social categories like gender and race and socioeconomic class and region. So if you're interested in courses on um, language and gender, language change, dialects of English, uh, all of that sort of thing Kara uh, uh, teaches. Uh, and then our other uh, permanent faculty member uh, is Samir Khan, Samir Udola Khan. Uh, Samir is our sound expert. So he's uh, a phon phonetician and phonologist. And uh, he also teaches, uh, so he teaches our course on phonetics. He also teaches our course on phonology, which has to do with sound systems. So basically how the sounds of a given language might be uh, organized into systems and what happens uh, sort of at the level of complete utterances when sounds are put together to form larger units like, like syllables and words. Um, so Samir teaches a variety of courses that have to do with this uh, issue. He also teaches a survey course on uh, languages of South Asia. Samir also runs our lab. We have uh, a, a lab space on campus that we call the Lab of Linguistics or LOL. And uh, in our lab, we've got all kinds of uh, software and equipment for doing uh, uh, measurements of sounds in all kinds of different ways, acoustic measurements, articulatory measurements. And we also have a soundproof booth uh, on campus. I think we're one of only two liberal arts colleges in the country that has a, a, a linguistics lab with a soundproof booth. And then there's me. Um, so uh, like I said, I teach primarily courses to do with syntax. I also teach uh, a survey course on uh, languages of the Austronesian family. I also teach a course called Morphosyntactic Typology, which is essentially a, a course that uh, surveys the grammars of the world's languages. So you learn sort of all about the grammatical structures of, of different kinds of languages from around the world. 
Uh, and then at the, uh, uh, I also teach semantics, which deals with um, linguistic meaning and how we study that from a formal perspective. Another course that I teach, one that I'm teaching right now, is a course called Linguistic Field Methods, which is basically a lab course for linguistics. What we do every week is we sit down with a, uh, a, a Reed student who's a native speaker of a, uh, an understudied language. And we interview that speaker and gather data and try and figure out the grammatical patterns of the language, everything from the sound patterns of the language. So we try to listen for the sounds and figure out how to transcribe them correctly. Uh, we look at, uh, we're examining the word structure of the language, and we're also looking at the sentence structure. Normally, if someone is going to uh, take linguistics courses and maybe major in linguistics, they normally won't start doing that until their sophomore year. We have two introductory courses, uh, the one that I co-teach with Samir in the fall, and then uh, Kara also teaches an introductory course in the spring. Linguistics majors have to take uh, both of these courses. Uh, they are technically open to first-year students, but uh, uh, they're quite popular courses, and so they tend to fill up pretty quickly with sophomore and junior students who want to take them. And that's totally fine. We've set up our linguistics major so that you can do most of the coursework for the major in your sophomore, junior, and senior year. So we plan it out so that if you have to wait until sophomore year to take our introductory course, that's fine. You won't be behind schedule. There are a couple courses that we offer every year. Uh, the introductory syntax class that I teach is one of them, uh, and Samir's phonetics class is another, which don't have the introductory course as prerequisites. So sometimes there's space in those courses uh, for first-year students. So we, we often have first-year students who are, you know, really anxious to, to take a linguistics course, but they can't get into our intro course because it's full. So they'll end up taking one of these uh, other no prerequisite courses as their first linguistics course, and then kind of circle back and do the, the, um, the intro courses their sophomore year. So in addition to the two intro courses, students take five additional courses in linguistics of their choice. We don't really have tracks in our major. Um, uh, students just sort of pick and choose whichever one of our courses, our upper division courses they wanna take for the major. Um, students, uh, the linguistics major also has a very hefty foreign language requirement. So um, uh, we're the only department at Reed that requires students to study two foreign languages. Our foreign language requirement is not a coursework requirement, it's, it's a proficiency requirement. So what that means is that you need to demonstrate proficiency at the first year college level in one language and at the second year college level in a second language. And then a third component of the linguistics, uh, uh, the, the requirements for the linguistics major is what's called an allied field. So students are also required to take uh, four semester courses in a separate field other than linguistics. Uh, one that they, uh, you know, one that is related in some way to the study of language, but uh, that is sort of outside of linguistics itself. And the idea is that we view linguistics as being an interdisciplinary field, right? We interface with all sorts of other fields, and we want students who major in linguistics to also have some experience, um, uh, some sort of in-depth experience with another, another field. So, uh, it's kind of up to the student to, to decide what allied field they want to pursue. That's the choice that the, the student has that choice. Uh, but uh, common options include things like uh, psychology, philosophy, uh, mathematics, uh, literature and foreign language, biology. Uh, we've even had people do theater or dance or art history. How many linguistics majors minor in one of the language departments? And have you, have you seen that very much in the last couple of years? We have, yes. Um, so if you are completing one of your language, one or both of your language requirements uh, for the linguistics major with courses taken here at Reed, then oftentimes you'll have accrued enough courses that you'll be able to declare a minor in that foreign language. I don't normally have summer research assistants, but I know that Kara and Samir often do. Uh, so there's usually one or two, sometimes more, students in the department who are doing uh, linguistics-related research over the summer. Or they might be able to find opportunities to do that, that sort of thing elsewhere. Um, 
Summer travel is reasonably common. Um, there are uh, summer uh, study opportunities in linguistics that we uh, try and uh, uh, make sure our students know about. The Linguistic Society of America, the, the website that I link to, uh, every other summer, they offer a summer institute, which is basically an opportunity to take linguistics classes and participate in workshops and talks with linguists from all over North America and, and overseas. Similarly, there's a summer program called COLANG, C-O-L-A-N-G. I don't remember what that stands for, but uh, that's a summer program. It's Again, it's, it's sort of a summer school slash workshop type program uh, that specifically deals with um, uh, language documentation. So one thing that linguists are very concerned to do is to work with indigenous communities in different parts of the world to document their languages, to provide uh, not only uh, linguistic documentation like uh, dictionaries and reference grammars for these languages, but also teaching materials for the use for use by um, uh, small communities, indigenous communities that are interested in perpetuating their language and preventing it from dying out or that are trying to revive a language that maybe was spoken by an older generation and then uh, uh, people stopped speaking it because you know, they were pressured to speak um, colonial languages or what have you. So those are a few kind of summer opportunities that, that occur to me.